This is a recording from Sonnets from the Portuguese by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. These sonnets, written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, 1806 to 1861, are from Sonnets from the Portuguese. Published in 1850, the collection is a record of the courtship between Elizabeth and her future husband and fellow poet, Robert Browning. Sonnet 10 Yet love, mere love, is beautiful indeed and worthy of acceptation. Fire is bright, let temple burn or flax, an equal light leaps in the flame from cedar plank or weed, and love is fire, and when I say at need, I love thee, Mark, I love thee. In thy sight I stand transfigured, glorified aright, with conscience of the new rays that proceed out of my face toward thine, there's nothing low. In love, when love the lowest, meanest creatures who love God. God accepts while loving so. And what I feel across the inferior features of what I am doth flash itself and show how that great work of love enhances natures. Sonnet 11 And therefore, if to love can be Desert, I am not all unworthy. Cheeks as pale as these you see, and trembling knees that fail to bear the burden of a heavy heart. This weary minstrel life that once was girt to climb Aornus and can scarce avail to pipe now against the valley nightingale, a melancholy music. Why advert to these things? O oh, beloved, it is plain, I am not of thy worth, nor for thy place. And yet, because I love thee, I obtain from that same love this vindicating grace, to live on still in love, and yet in vain, to bless thee, yet renounce thee to thy face. Sonnet 12 Indeed, this very love, which is my boast, and which, when rising up from breast to brow, doth crown me with a ruby large, and now, to draw men's eyes and prove the inner cost, this love even, all my worth, to the uttermost, I should not love withal, unless that thou hadst set me an example, shown me how. When first thine earnest eyes with mine were crossed, and love called love, and thus I cannot speak of love even as a good thing of my own, thy soul hath snatched up mine all faint and weak, and placed it by thee on a golden throne. And that I love, O soul, we must be meek, is by thee only, whom I love alone. Sonnet 13 And wilt thou have me fashion into speech the love I bear thee, finding words enough, and hold the torch out while the winds are rough, between our faces to cast light on each? I drop it at thy feet. I cannot teach my hand to hold my spirit so far off from myself, me, that I should bring thee proof in words of love hid in me out of reach. Nay, let the silence of my womanhood commend my woman love to thy belief. Seeing that I stand unwan, however wooed, and rend the garment of my life in brief by a most dauntless, voiceless fortitude. Least one touch of this heart convey its grief. Sonnet 14 If thou must love me, let it be for naught, 
except for love's sake only. Do not say I love her for her smile, her look, her way of gentle speaking, for a trick of thought that falls in wells with mine, and certs brought a sense of pleasant ease on such a day. For these things in themselves, beloved, may be changed, or change for thee, and love so wrought may be unwrought so. Either love me for thine own dear pities wiping my cheeks dry, a creature might forget to weep, who bore thy comfort long, and lose thy love thereby. But love me for love's sake, that evermore thou mayest love on, through love's eternity. Sonnet 43 How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breadth, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God chose, I shall but love thee better after death. <laughs>